Hello, I'm Donna Williams and I was going to uh, talk a bit about um, how chemo is going. I didn't do any clips since uh, chemo 1 and um, just to give a little bit of progress. So um, every person's journey with chemo is going to be different. And of course, you know, they give different drugs for different types of cancer and uh, the types of drugs that I get uh, cause certain things and someone else with a different type of cancer getting different type of chemo treatment cause completely different things. So there's no such thing as, you know, when everyone goes through chemo because it's different. Um, uh, when I'm, I'm now just come out of chemo 3 and I'm going into chemo 4 next week. Um, every, every person's body is different. I come from a background of um, stuff like immune deficiency, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, food allergies, so a lot of immune and autoimmune issues. I have always had other stuff going on like um, I got a diagnosis of atypical epilepsy in my 20s. Um, I have uh, had some stuff with the brain muscle thing where I've had episodes where it's difficult to get off the floor that my brain isn't easily talking to my legs so I use my arms and then once I get my legs going my brain starts talking to my legs. Um, it's only intermittent so it's no, <laughs> it's kind of like an intermittent electrical fault. I have always had difficulty with the bowel thing um, sometime, in both directions so sometimes it just doesn't glue together and sometimes it glues so much together nothing's happening. Um, I, I've had you know background with um, uh, sort of severe constipation stuff. Um, uh, I've had stuff where I've had a racing heart and I've had um, an irregular heartbeat before that again it's intermittent so nobody's ever really worried a lot about it. I've had the fainting thing since probably about 13 which tended to happen with sudden low blood pressure so standing up um, if I've been bending down I stand up uh, that kind of stuff um, and again although you know it's caused the fainting stuff people have never really worried tremendously about it I've had the pins and needles thing in my hands um, in particular, also in my face, in my feet, and uh, this commonly also happens in my sleep, so you get all this stuff where all the hands are gone numb. So I know there's circulatory problems and I can remember those since I was maybe, uh, well it's certainly primary school, I used to get these ladders all up my legs from circulatory stuff. Um, uh, I've never really responded normally to the heat cold thing um, uh, so there's been a temperature kind of how I understand my brain understands temperature that hasn't been normal in my entire life I had the response to pain thing that was similar where I was in my teens by the time I could properly make sense of that I'm experiencing pain and what to do about it so when you have a certain history um, and then you throw a load of really heavy drugs at it, what's going to happen is that whatever normally affects you is going to, you know, it's, it's going to affect you a lot more. So I also have a history of things like um, se severe visual perceptual shifts, um, particularly with uh, cow's milk, but I've also had the blackout stuff with peanuts and... Um, uh, when I have dairy it's like I've been shot through the language center of my brain I can't understand speech much um, a lot of my health issues have created this sort of brain fog where it's really hard to uh, process information so it's like being partly drugged partly drunk on and off all your life and so you can never really tell how with it or how out of it you're going to be you can't tell how good your language batteries are going to be. Are they going to run out after five minutes, 20 minutes? And so gaining speech when you spent nine years largely meaning deaf is really hard. 
And so I was quite echolalic, but by 9 to 11, I could, um, I start, I understood the one word, one meaning thing and began to clunkily construct sentences. And so by 11, I had uh, the ability to throw long litanies of people. And by my late teens, I had mixtures of that echolalia and functional speech. So by my 20s and 30s, I think, you know, mostly people see me as someone who has fairly, usually fairly good functional speech, but people who spend time with me have found that it will fall out at times and can even go back to just single words and um, uh, really jumbly sentence structure. And what happens in my head is I can't find the words or remember how to put them in order. Um, yeah, I look at things and have no idea what the word is that goes with um, the meaning blindness thing also um, plays in with the language side. And so going through chemo, I think it's quite uh, expected that someone who's already got a really strange brain is going to have more extreme version of that really strange brain. And that's what happened. Um, so chemo... Um, meant that my brain and um, heart, you know, my heart wasn't regulated, so it was jumping like up to 30 beats per minute, just going from like 80 to 120 sort of thing. Um, and that really messes with your brain and your um, blood pressure. And um, I had difficulty regulating my breathing. The, the diaphragm muscles just would seize up, so all the breathing became really shallow and up here. So when I was falling asleep, it was really hard to breathe, and um, I was getting really dizzy and um, sort of all numb in my hands. And, um, and then I would sort of wake up really groggy and realise I'm not breathing and try and breathe, but it was so tiring and so hard because the diaphragm muscles my brain wasn't kind of waking them up and and they just got <laughs> um my brain and um the bladder were not working well so uh from about one in the afternoon to 2 a.m in the morning uh all i could do was let out spoonfuls and when you've been filled up with bags of chemo drugs and encouraged to drink lots of fluid that's got to go somewhere and usually your uh, your kidneys would take that on and that would go from there and out through your bladder but with the bladder not talking to the kidneys then it was kind of backlogging and so the whole lymph thing was blowing up and uh, I dealt with that with things like um, lymphedema massage, um, compression sleeves, compression stockings, yoga but I finally resorted to jumping on the trampoline and, and using gravity to just um, make things fall out. And that seemed to switch my brain back on and it learned how to start to take some stuff up from my kidneys and pee by 2 a.m. But that's very tiring because <laughs> you can't really uh, sleep. You're, I, was, I was so rock hard around here. And even though I didn't have the urinary frequency because there wasn't the messages I, I still couldn't sleep because of the, the sort of discomfort going on. Same thing happened with the bowel. So my bowel, um, you know, wasn't gurgling. It wasn't, no, not a fart in the house. <laughs> um, really hard to, uh, to kind of get the brain to talk to the bowel. And um, uh, so we had to rely on um, the laxative thing to create some spasms and lots of walking to try to kick start the bowel lots of liquid food leading up to chemo and then after chemo to try and make it easier and eventually by day three it's it's working you know it's working itself um so it, that was pretty scary and that doesn't mean this is going to happen to people who don't have my kind of brain stuff so this is a autonomic nervous system dysfunction where my brain uh, doesn't talk easily to parts of my body when I'm uh, when it's inundated with um, especially certain chemicals or things that that my body reacts to so um, yeah that was kind of weird and um, really difficult to process language the day after chemo I can't understand sentences very well and about 
one or two seconds after, even if I've understood, I can't remember anything that was said to me. So either I can't understand it as it's said, or I understand it and then it's all tumbly and doesn't mean anything. So um, understanding how to put together activities like how to make a cup of tea, I can't go from one object to another and I can't take an idea from here and then apply it and put it together. So it um, becomes scary. Uh, you feel really brain injured for a while and not everybody will have chemo brain um, and it's hard to tell is that dysautonomia brain, is that chemo brain, is that auti brain, you know, or is that what happens to autistic people with dysautonomia when they have chemo? <laughs> Uh, I don't know but I guess what I would say is that by day six I'm starting to wake up starting to be able to glue uh, some of my my brain together um, uh, and it, I then have this amnesia kind of thing where I can't remember the week um, I especially never can remember the day after chemo um, but so I you know you have to chill out with that and and uh, I do take sort of supplements I do yoga every day I do walking every night no matter how tired if I've eaten I will help my bowel <laughs> to know what food is for and get it moving and um, yeah, we call them fart walks so we walk until something's having some activity <laughs> and um, and what's good is that seems to kind of get some kind of hello to the brain that it's got it's got to work uh so that's been kind of okay um i am now uh through chemo three and chemo four is next week they um gave me some extra drugs so i am on new Lester, which is a drug that gives me um a normal white cell count because my neutrophils went to zero in chemo one and I got infections. Um, so now I have new Lester with my chemo cycles. I am on a drug called Mesna that protects my bladder from um, the damage of one of the chemo drugs. So because I can't pee, <laughs> um, it can cause really, uh, cause things like cystitis and stuff. And I was getting um, those kind of problems with the bladder, but the Mesna seems to have made my bladder much less um, distressed. It's still not working, uh, you know, until 2 a.m. each chemo cycle, but it's, once it is working, I don't have all the pain and the burning and the cystitis kind of symptoms. Uh, the nurses have been really good. The oncologist has been really understanding um, uh, and my friends have been fabulous and my partner is absolutely wonderful. And um, uh, I guess uh, also, uh, the attitude thing is really important to, I keep a, I keep a sense of my everyday life and, um, I don't think my life's on hold. I just changed my life to fit, uh, the chemo, the months of chemo and, um, same as I, you know, coming out the other side, I have hormone therapy coming up. I have a second mastectomy because I had the first mastectomy. So finally I'll be, I'll be a flat-chested person instead of a one-breasted person um, and uh, and that's where I'm going so but mostly I'm going forward with a new expiry date I'm going forward with uh, having been a person who's been to Mars for four obligatory trips um, and come back and survived it each time no matter how much it's kind of wiped the slate and really knocked me out so I hope that at least that part for people who are going through chemo everyone's journey will be different your symptoms won't necessarily at all be the same as mine but uh you know it, it is ultimately survivable um yeah and that's it thanks for listening bye